Yo guys, Crescent here. Welcome to my um, another build video. Today I'll be showing you a Stamina Warden build. I'm gonna call this build Rapido because this build is really really quick. It's like kind of unsnarable, I would say, and the damage is really really solid as well. So um, so resource gain obviously is quite decent because I'm a Stamina Warden and there are some skills that can help with the resource. So I'll show you in detail um how to build uh, this build. Basically, this is like a it's not your typical stamina warden build because the sets you'll be using are quite quite different than your normal stamina warden builds. Alright, let's hop straight into the the items. Okay. So the monster helm. There are two monster helm that I really really like to use. Um so in CP campaign I really like to use Blood Spawn. So we'll be using uh either blood spawn or pirate skeleton in uh, in non cp campaign i would like to use pirate skeleton because i just feel like those the resistance gain from the one piece is just so so important and when you um when you transform into a skeleton and you gain a ma major protection is just way too good i think that is really really powerful so uh for non cp i would use two piece pirate skeleton one medium one heavy uh, both you want to be impenetrable and in non CP, I will use a blood spawn, one heavy and one medium as well, both impenetrable. You could use tri stat glyph on the big pieces like this one. Um, I actually took this from my uh, magical magical templar, so so I have the tri stat glyph. That's why I just use it. You could use a, a max stamina or tri stat glyph. Both are just equally good. All right. Uh, because you, as a warden, you don't really need to worry about your health because of one of the passive that will give you a minor. I can't remember which, what what buff is that, but minor toughness if I'm not mistaken. So you have you have ten percent extra HP. So uh, um, you want to make sure you have uh, those two part uh those two monster helmet, pirate skeleton and bone blood spawn. And the second set we'll be using is um ranger set. This is the set that is uh, really under underrated in my opinion. It's kind of funky this set. It doesn't give you much. It gives you two times stamina recovery, one weapon crit. 1 max stamina, decent, overall decent, but the good thing about this set, it reduces the stamina applied to you by 50%. I tested this already, it's such a big difference. I tested it with a, a night blade, kept closing me by with a 70% stamina. I got a feeling I just received 20% stamina from it, so it's either reduce it by half or take away 50% from it. So I'm not sure, but what I'm pretty sure it, it stacks with the winter embrace so yeah reduces the effectiveness of snare applied to you by 15 percent so with that you will reduce the snare affected by you by about i don't know 65 percent also it's just because it's addition if i'm not mistaken so it's really really powerful so basically uh all the snares that apply to you are actually just like really really tiny so you still can move really really um you know freely i would say uh so what you'll be using is you'll be using either on the jewelry or on the body so you can buy this set that is the really good thing about this set and it's super super cheap so just make sure you get all impenetrable pieces uh sorry i actually on the body pieces you want five impenetrable and two well fitted why i use well fitted is because we are using a six medium one heavy build so i feel like you put two more well fitted and you can dodge throw way more you can avoid way more damage okay and um yeah so just make sure you have five pieces either on the body or on the, on the jewelry and then the second set we'll be using there are two options you can either use spriggans or you could use sench both are really really powerful if you don't want to buy if you are really 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 broke you can use ranger set all on the jewelry and two pieces on the body and you can just slot in a set like um like what do you call that not Juliano's um, Hunting's Reach so you can just slot in Hunting's Reach if you want but basically what I use I feel like Spriggan is the best because we our sword and board is our main DPS bar so I feel like just Spriggan's is just the best for me but Sench however is really powerful if you can time your combo right um, because there are skills like Fisher you can time them with a basically with your Dawnbreaker and you can use the bird skill you can use i'll go through the skills later bird of prey so you, if you can time it while proccing your uh weapon damage enchantment with a dot throw into a a bit bird of prey dot throw into weapon enchantment then into dawnbreaker and uh all those 
uh, feature it's going to be so powerful but that is that build is really tricky i tested it really sent it could work definitely could work but you just need to sometimes under too much pressure you can't you can't do that combo so well but if you can do it well it's going to be crazy your weapon damage is going to go to like 2.4k or something it's going to be really powerful Alright, but I like Spriggans because it's overall just there. You don't need to mess so much with it, okay? So, we'll be using Spriggans and uh, Ranger. And Spriggans we'll be using on uh, the Sword and Board. Um, you could use Infuse if you want. If you use Infuse, you could slot something like, um, I would say, Disease Damage is really powerful. So, um, if you are Infuse, use Disease Damage. If you're like me, uh, and you play quite often in uh, non-CP as well. Use Nern Horn. I think Nern Horn in non-CP is better. And um, use Damage Health Poison. So you get the benefit from Nern Horn. And you get the benefit from the poisons as well. So it's really really powerful that way. Um, and on the front bar we'll be using uh, either a Maelstrom or Alasium weapons. Depending on what skill you want to use. Whether you're using Gap Close or using Execute. Or if you're not using Execute or Gap Close at all. You can just use... Uh, a random sword or you can use, just, use, just use a Spriggan sword on the front bar just make sure it's infused and gives you weapon damage uh, enchantment okay it's really important yeah so yeah, that's about it for the setup um, on, on the jewelry we'll be using one stamina cost reduction two weapon damage uh, this is for CP campaign for non CP campaign you could consider either one more cost reduction or one more um, uh, stamina recovery so it's really up to you okay so I will show you the stats really quickly. So um, I'll just buff up. And then I'll light attack on this bar. You can see the weapon damage is close to 3.8k. Weapon crit is about 44%, 45%, really powerful. Recovery, um, actually I'll just use all these things. Alright. So... Um, I will use a potion now so you can see the stamina recovery is about 1.8k or so and I'll buff up myself really quickly again sorry yeah resistance is about 23k plus uh, it's even more deceptive because you have 8% from your sh uh, frost ice armor and another 30% reduction if you are using something like a pirate skeleton or if you are using blood spawn it will increase by another 6k so it's quite decisive it, it will go up even higher okay and uh yeah maximum stamina is a little bit low 33k health is about 25k in zero deal after with the minor buff minor toughness buff magicka is a uh, 12k remember this i am argonian so my stats are gonna it's gonna be definitely lower than let's say a raid guard or an orc so if you're raid guard and orc you'll definitely have higher stats than me Okay, um, the important thing is our physical penetration is actually 10k or so because after the uh, Stabiliterian Assault hit, it's going to go up, it's going to reduce the enemy, uh, re the enemy's um, resistance by another 525k, uh, 5.2k, 5.3k more or less because of the um, major fracture. So, sub assault is actually quite powerful so, uh, so we in principle we have um, about 10k physical penetration all right uh, yeah our crit resistance is a little bit low only 16 1.7k uh, also but we have two well fitted that's why it's a bit lower than usual we are using the um, warriors Mandelstone. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be using Dubious Cameron Throne. You don't need to be a vampire. I have vampire because uh, sometimes when I want to play, I want to change back to Magicka class. I think vampire is worth it on it. But for stamina class, don't use vampire. Because I just feel like <sighs> Zan is going to kill you. Zan and Scoria, they are hitting way too hard. So just don't go vampire. Okay, um, and now to the potions. We'll be using the poisons like I mentioned just now is the double dot poison. You can use different poisons if you want, but I just like the double dot poison. Poison you can apply more pressure on your enemy. Um, the potions you can use tristep potion is really nice. You could use this is one of my favorite potion. Um, the immune to knockback speed and restore stamina, or you could use immune to knockback crit and restore stamina. Both are really really good. I'll tell you how which one you should use when I go through the skills. Okay, invincible pot definitely good. Speed of Essence is good in non-CP to give you that uh, quick 
um, dot heal um, HOT, I mean um, heal over time and uh, grants you major expedition as well and uh, yeah this is from my magic connect lid so yeah that's about it for the potions and poisons so um, now to the skills this is really important I will go this bar is fixed on the back bar so um, there's a few play styles you can use you can play uh, you can use to play a stamina warden uh, you can use a wrecking blow play style heavy armor is the best for that um, yeah I'll go through really quickly if you want to go heavy armor you just take away ranger put in a um, put in like something like uh, fury and then I think it's really really good and then maybe on the back bar you can use like a werewolf hide or you can use something like a cinch so you dot throw into wrecking blow and then dawn breaker it's really up to you that that is how you use the heavy armor build okay but this is a medium armor build so I'll just stick to this build so the skills are uh, on our offensive bar you have heroic slash revert bash uh, supplementarian assault uh, spores for the healing vigor for the uh, he, uh, heal over time, Dawnbreaker, our CC, uh, and our ultimate, our damage dealing ultimate as well. And on the back bar, this is where it gets uh, really interesting. Let me just kill it. Alright. On the back bar, um, I'll show you the basics first, okay? This is a back bar is just a buff bar there's no gap close there's no execute however you can fit gap close and execute into the back bar so it depends on situation sometimes i just feel like gap close is really really good especially against a sorcerer a magical sorcerer or stamina night blade the gap close is just so important however you could survive without the gap close definitely okay so i think boo natch is really really good it gives you a lot of uh stamina back so i definitely recommend you to use this skill ice fortress is a must have have to use this this is uh, this will give you minor protection and it will gives you um, obviously major resolve and major what so it's really powerful and uh, green lotus this is our flex spot okay you can use either green lotus bird of prey or you could use reverse slice or gap close these are the four skills that i switch around often okay so if i'm using green lotus i get the crit i get major savagery so i'll use speed potion if i'm using something like bird of prey i will get the speed i will get the major expedition from this skill so i would i will use crit potion instead so i switch it around however if i'm using a gap close um if i'm using stampede or i'm using reverse slice then i will usually just use a crit potion uh sorry um, a major expedition potion usually unless i'm fighting somebody really tanky and then i will use for execute i will use slm weapon for gap close i will use maelstrom weapon okay so i always go in gap close light attack and then always light attack first i'll show you the combos later how you can kill off target um really easily but basically you want to always light attack on your back bar to gain the weapon damage okay into the fissure because the cooldown is five seconds the duration of the weapon damage enchantment is five seconds so your fissure will proc between three seconds so you will get the damage the full damage with your fissure and your full combo and a shimmering shield is just such a powerful skill because it get, lets you have major heroism so you can spam a lot of trees you can use a lot of dawn breakers so i highly recommend this skill and nowadays there are way way too many snipers especially in the pc eu server so you have to use this skill especially in one vx i'm talking about one vx situation okay and forward momentum this is a bit overkill if you're using the ranger setup like i am you could definitely go for um rally so you get the really really sweet burst heal um, but sometimes like i mentioned i do play heavy armor setup so i just feel like for forward momentum is just so powerful for heavy armor so i'm just using it because i can't i can't just respect every time i want to change to heavy or medium so i just decided to go just go for forward momentum okay and our uh, healing ultimate is our uh, yeah healing trigger this is our healing ultimate and yeah our defensive ultimate on this bar so uh, it's really up to you for this green lotus skill this is our flex spot which skill you want to use you have to test it out yourself um i can't say which one is the best because sometimes it's really situational sometimes when i'm fighting multiple target the 
the execute is AOE and it, it helps to kill off multiple targets. Sometimes the like you if you're fighting someone really really good, Green Lotus is gonna help you sustain so much with the heals and everything. So it's really up to you, okay? Just test it around. This is your flex spot. Alright, now um to the combos. I need to find a mob. Okay, this is the my mob. So I tap target him like usual you fight someone. So what you wanna do is let's say you're not having a gap close or execute, alright? The first thing you wanna do obviously you wanna buff up. If he's using a range, if he's using a range build, obviously you want your shimmering shoes, buff up everything, and then the first thing you want to do is you want to go into him. You want to do a light attack real quick, and then you go into Fisher. You do one round of um, one round of what do you call it? Heroic slash. Sorry. So I do it again. You light attack, you get the buff. You, you Fisher, Heroic slash. You CC them, and then you Dawnbreaker. So that is the basic combo I will do. I will CC them before the um before this uh what you call it the fissure hit before the sub subterranean hit then i'll just go into dawnbreaker so it will hit really really hard so when they, the moment they break free from the cc they are taking already so much damage okay so i'll just show it again buff up like usual so if you got to get closer you get close in and do a light attack just to get the weapon enchantment fissure do one round and then do a CC and then you will Dawnbreaker. If you don't have Dawnbreaker, then you you repeat this again. You do like that. You keep surrounding your enemy. You surround them. So you do, you don't just stand there and then just do the light attack like that. You surround them. You move around. Okay. So um, why you move around is because you want to you want to um target your fissure at the right direction. Okay. So you want to move around. Make sure he's um, not too close to you. So because it's, it's really hard to aim if it's too close to you so you want to go a little bit to the side or to the back a bit make sure your fissure hit while you're doing um, putting pressure on him alright uh, that is the basic combo uh, basically if you're using a wrecking blow it's more or less the same you just buff up yourself on the back bar and then you usually want to go on your back bar do a light attack to gain the weapon damage enchantment go to the front bar do a light attack again then you charge up your your fissure and then you go into wrecking blow tomb break execute it's more or less the same it's uh the play style is quite similar it's just that the choice of your skills will decide a lot of stuff okay for uh the warden the uh, stamina warden i mean this this class is just really really powerful especially in a small skill group this this skill is just way way too strong it's like such a good skill it applies major breach and major fracture so it reduces spell and crit uh spell and physical damage physical resistance sorry so it's just so nice okay and since we are with medium armor build you can see the cost of these skills are not that high as well it's around the 2k mark 2.1k 2.5k 2.2k okay obviously your spores will cost a lot because it's a healing skill 3.2k vigor obviously will cost more 2.9k but overall the skills are quite cheap all right that's why it's just really really nice to go medium armor but some people like heavy armor it's uh, up to you guys which which kind of uh, which kind of play style you want to you want to you want to go for all right i'll go through the cp now and then i'll end, end this video for the green tree you want 11 to siphoner 51 warlord 43 into mooncalf 11 to tenacity but if you are a uh, heavy armor build, you definitely want to put more into tenacity. But I'm not a heavy armor build. I'm a medium armor build, so I put less into this. 33 into Bifal, 51 into Tumbling, 40 into Shadow Art. Um, 33 into Bifal is just to get your um, get your revert bash into the 39% mark. So when you put 33 points into this, you will gain 9% more. Um, my nine percent more on your major defile okay so your enemy will heal less uh 27 to bless 20 to shattering blows 72 into master at arms 51 to precise 21 into piercing 49 to mighty 66 ironclad 23 resistance 44 thick skin 43 hardy for 37 elemental defender and 27 quick recovery uh yeah so this is the build um I would say uh, personally I would prefer to go for red guard because I think red guard will help with the sustain way more and uh, it will help with the max magicka um the yeah max magicka and the magicka recovery so with red guard I definitely feel this build will be stronger but it it's not bad as well on a lizard on a, on an argonian it's just that the max magicka is just a little bit wasted that's all 
but resource wise it's still really really nice okay yeah i think that's about it for this build uh, make sure you throw this video a like make sure you subscribe to my channel for more eso videos and i'll see you guys in serial okay bye bye